Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again. And in this video, I wanted to show off the installation process for the KDE Neon Distribution, which is a great distro for those of you that want to run the latest Plasma desktop environment. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out this machine right here in this video and show you the installation process. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so I'm here on my laptop on the boot menu. I basically just downloaded the ISO image for KDE Neon and I flashed it to my flash drive. I do have a video on my channel already that shows you how to do that and there's a link in the show notes below that will point you to the direction of where you can download KDE Neon. So you basically just download the ISO image and then if you don't already know how to do it, follow my video on using Etcher to create the bootable media. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this strangely named item right here, which is actually my generic flash drive. I'll go ahead and press enter, and let's go ahead and boot into KDE Neon. All right, so here I am. I just started from the installation media, which gives you an awesome live environment that you can use to make sure that this distribution is going to work on your machine before you actually commit to installing it. So what you can do is click over here to the wireless network icon, if you click on that, you can go ahead and get a list of wireless networks. You just click on the one that's yours. After you connect to the internet, then you can basically make sure various things work, such as your audio and other you know, pieces of hardware that you might have to confirm that this will work. And then once you confirm that everything seems to work just fine, you could basically click on this install neon right here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Then center this here. So we're gonna go ahead and start the installation process. So basically I'm going to assume that you don't mind wiping out your hard drive because that's what I'm going to do in this video. Um, if you're following along with me, just make sure that you have backed up everything that's important because this is a process that will erase everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and click continue, just leaving the default of the English language here. I'll click continue. And again, I'm accepting the defaults. Of course, if yours, your keyboard is a different layout, then, you know, of course, select that here. But I'll click Continue. And then I get a selection of wireless networks here. I'm just going to go ahead and skip that for now and click Continue. Now, at this point, you have an option to install third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi hardware, and additional media formats. So what exactly does that mean? Well, basically, there's some drivers that the Linux community kind of, there's some stigma surrounding them because there might be licensing issues or something like that that the average person might not care about, and it just makes that optional. I recommend that most people go ahead and check this box because basically what that will do is if there's any hardware that requires special drivers. It'll just go above and beyond to try to make those things work. I'm gonna leave it on selected so I don't add unnecessary time because that will increase the length of the installation process because it has more to download. But that is something that I recommend that you consider. I'll click continue. And in my case, I'm going to use entire disk that basically is gonna wipe out everything. And I already have KDE Neon on this disk already, but I'm just basically wiping it out and installing fresh. Now optionally, if you'd like, you can install via encrypted LVM, which means that's encryption at rest when your machine is not on. The data is basically unreadable unless you boot the machine and then enter the required password to decrypt it, which is great. Um, you know, God forbid you basically have your laptop stolen, but if something like that were to happen and your machine was encrypted, then you have uh, you know, reason to believe that there's no way that anybody's gonna be able to access your data. Um, the option is yours. I'm gonna go ahead and use entire disk and just keep it as the default. I'll click install now. And it's just giving me a warning, letting me know it's gonna wipe out everything. That's okay. Now at this point, it's actually installing. You can see that it's installing here at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and select my location, which will help make sure I'm in the correct time zone. Now click continue here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put in my name and type in a simple password just for the purposes of this video. I'll leave the computer name as default. That's basically the name that your machine will show up as on the network if you're doing any file sharing, but I'm not. I'll just click continue, leave everything else as default there. 
And then we basically have the installation proceeding here. We can see that it's actually going pretty quick. The installation process on this machine is not taking long at all. It is an SSD though, so there is that. So of course it's probably going to be faster than if you didn't have an SSD like me. So I'll go ahead and let this finish and fast forward through the rest. All right, so the installation is finished. I'm gonna go ahead and restart now, which will give me an opportunity to make sure the install was successful. And I'll remove the flash drive and press enter, as it says here. All right, so I'm here at the login screen, so if you're curious what that looks like, here it is. I'll go ahead and put in my password to log in. All right, so here I am at the desktop now that it's installed. I can add additional applications, of course, after I connect to a wireless network, that's the first thing. But then after that, you can basically use the Discover, which is you know your software center here to install additional applications. And of course, you have a web browser, so you are able to browse the web right away. And then go, you're free to go ahead and check out the latest version of Plasma. So that's basically it. The installation process for KDE Neon is you know, really simple. There's not a whole lot to it, but in case you were curious of the process and what it looked like, well, you just saw it. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And I will have a review of KDE Neon on my channel as well. So feel free to check that out when you see it and I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below and there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page as well as my Amazon store which includes a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.